Well, good morning, everybody. It is way before the sun is going to come up, but as you can see, these guys never stop. With the sand replenishment here in Surfside, California, the birds are feeding, the sand is being replenished, and you know what time it is. I'm heading down to the beach to get the morning briefing underway. Stay tuned, everybody. Hey, good morning, my dear friends, and welcome to beautiful Surfside, California. It's really early here this morning, just before sunrise, and I get the feeling like I'm in the Galapagos Islands or something, with all these birds feeding on, of course, the sand replenishment. That sand is coming from offshore, and mixed in all of that are clams and mussels and sand crabs and who knows what else? All for these birds to dine on. An early morning treat for sure. Well, it is great to be with you, and it's a beautiful Saturday morning. We've got a lot to talk about, including an extraordinary catch by a young man on board the Native Sun yesterday, a mammoth halibut. And congratulations, Colton, right up front. What a great catch. We'll delve into that a little bit. The Bart Hall Show is continuing down there in San Diego at the Del Mar Fairgrounds. I'll be walking around there in just a moment. When you go through the gate and you see Bart, tell him Friedman Adventure sent you. That means a lot to us, and it would mean a lot to Bart also. And, man, I hope the crowds are as big as they were yesterday. Sam De La Torre said it was an extraordinarily great day at the Del Mar Fairgrounds yesterday. And, of course, we're going to be taking a look at Mexico. The Royal Polaris is now fishing. We'll see how they did yesterday. We're going to watch and see some other halibut guys like the Aloha Spirit. Still some good sculpin and whitefish in the Southern California surf is still alive. You know what time it is. It's time for the morning briefing. Good morning, my friends. Oh my God, is that good? It's really not that cold out here. If I had to guess, I'd say like 52 degrees, something like that. So not bad at all. This cloud cover is keeping a lot of the heat in here on the earth or in Southern California for that matter. So it's not a bad day at all. And as I told you, I don't expect much rain here this week. And yeah, you're going to get some rain, but there's no wind associated with it. And if you look out there, you can see how flat, gorgeous, calm it is. It's a perfect day to be out on the water fishing. And tomorrow should be a repeat of the kind of conditions we're experiencing here this morning. It should be really beautiful. Now, Monday through Wednesday, a little bit more precipitation heading our way. I'll keep you up to date on that. If you don't mind, hit that like button like so many of you always do. I deeply appreciate it. Subscribe to the Friedman Adventures YouTube channel down below there. Tick the bell. You'll be notified when there is new content. And share this video right now. Just share it with a friend and let them know about Friedman Adventures, the morning briefing every single morning. And don't forget, we are also over there on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Apple Podcast, and Spotify, always bringing you the very, very latest. All right, let's jump into it with you right away. Talk Mexico. Our friend Sean Morgan runs a yacht called the Wild in Sac out of San Jose del Cabo, very near Land's Inn, Cabo San Lucas. He says their marlin bite down there when it's not windy has been excellent, and it seems to be continuing that way. So some really good marlin fishing going on down there in that neck of the woods and I don't know how you can beat double digit catches on the striped marlin. Now it doesn't happen every single day and perhaps it's infrequent when you get over 10 or over 9 I should say on the striped marlin but it has been happening and it's really a treat when you get in on a day like that. Having said that if you get one striped marlin and it's your first billfish it's a thrill. Outside of there Further offshore are some yellowfin tuna that continue to bite. It's been breezy offshore, hard to get to them sometimes, and a lot of guys are satisfied to uh, mess around with the marlin. But if you get offshore, you can find some school-sized yellowfin tuna. In addition, some 100-plus pound fish running around out there also. So some really great fishing there. San Quentin area, we're watching it very, very closely. There has been some excellent yo-yo iron yellowtail fishing going on down there. We are hoping that is going to continue here this morning and also plenty of bottom fish. There's also been occasional nice big fat halibut for guys who focus on that out of San Quentin, man. They have some really good halibut fishing down there. Doesn't get talked about a lot. It's almost like 
Cedros Island, where they catch a lot of big halibut and a lot of white sea bass, but the focus at Cedros has been yellowtail. Well, San Quentin, kind of similar. They catch a lot of flatties down there, and we've seen a few here recently. Hopefully that is going to continue. The Ensenada area, we had that flash of yellowtail for our dear friend Louis Prieto, and it's for real sport fishing. Got it right this time, Louis. Um, some really great fishing for him down off Santo Tomas Reef a few days ago. He saw a lot of breezers of yellowtail, and that certainly bodes well for this year. The 2024 season already showing great signs on yellowtail. He caught those fish on the iron, and the thing that impressed me, and also Louie for that matter, the most out of four, its four real sport fishing was the size of those fish. They were gorgeous fish. When you don't get the yellowtail, you do get the bottom grabbers there. 70 miles below our border out of Ensenada. That has been very good on the bottom bite. As you can see, really excellent bottom fishing going on in Ensenada. You focus on the calico bass along rugged, pristine, gorgeous Punta Banda, and you can come up with some really good bass fishing there in addition. So really nice stuff going on south of the border. All right, let's talk long range right now. And on the long range scene, the Royal Polaris is way down the line. They tried for a yellowfin tuna, and it was a little bit on the difficult side. Didn't really get flashed with all that many fish. They finally put the skiffs in the water, and the guys went out and they caught a variety of oddities from the deep and the shallows for that matter. But they were catching all kinds of different reef fish, and that's always the throw. They did get flashed with some yellowfin tuna. I think they had one at 140 pounds on the Royal Polaris and one at 150 pounds, and then another dozen or so, 14 fish in the 40 to 70 pound class. They looked for some wahoo and came up with one, but just getting down to the area, everybody enjoying themselves and having a really great time. And man, I got to tell you, there is nothing like fishing on a long range boat out of San Diego. The Royal Polaris is currently on a 22 day trip. Other guys are running 16 day trips and they continue to scratch at those bigger yellowfin tuna and wahoo. It's been off the bite for a while now, over 10 days I would say. I mean off the bite in terms of really wide open fishing. The XL has pulled a couple of cow fish out here recently. Fish, yellowfin that is, over 200 pounds. Those are what we refer to as cows and so they've had some nice big fish. It's just that the numbers have been down here recently. We'll continue to monitor the long range scene for you all. You know what time it is? It's tax season. I know, I won't talk about it that much. It's a downer, but get that burden off your shoulders. Do it right now. Call Tim Marquez. He is such a great guy. He'll do you right. He will take great care of you. His expertise is at a level that's way up here. A best income tax, Tim Marquez. Give him a call today. All right, let's talk about Southern California in general right now. And we've got to start on board the Native Sun. They only had four halibut yesterday, but one of those fish was just an extraordinary catch. Colton, you know I'm talking about you, man. I have to be talking about you. And I just mentioned Tim Marquez from A Best Income Tax. He was on board the Native Sun. He wants to send his very best out to Javier. Javier, are you listening? Javier was a guy that was on board the trip, and he tutored Tim and took some time out of his busy day to show Tim the fine art of halibut fishing. Now, Colton was a 14-year-old young man, and his uncle told Tim that it's the first trip Colton has made in six years. And the kid catches his very first halibut on board the Native Sun yesterday at a 22nd Street landing in San Pedro, California and it weighs over 32 pounds. It was a magnificent catch. And here comes Colton with his first halibut, a beautiful catch, a fish that perhaps is bigger than any halibut you or I have ever caught in our lives. And that is quite an accomplishment, and the native son just keeps rolling on with their halibut derby, their bass derby. Man, they have provided some really great memories for a lot of people, and they are chugging along here again this weekend. As I told you, don't let this threat of rain scare you away from the sun or anybody else here this weekend. I don't see it. I don't see the wind, and that's the most important thing. And as I gaze out there past the Galapagos Islands birds and this surging water behind me, let me know if that uh, cliff starts to disintegrate, by the way, so I don't end up 
in the drink. Actually, I'd probably get a heck of a lot more views if I fell in the drink there. But we have just seen some outstanding fishing. The weather's beautiful, and it's a gorgeous sunrise here now in, of course, Surfside and Southern California in general. We got to go up to the Aloha Spirit because they were out yesterday out of Cisco Sport Fishing in Oxnard. My dear friend Pat O'Brien running the boat. Christopher Schmidt with a nice halibut on that one. 17 guys, 14 halibut on board the Aloha Spirit out of Cisco's. Pat O'Brien is a guy who says, I like light line. We're fishing these things in the sand. You're not going to get rocked. Drop down to 15 pound fluorocarbon and you've got a really great chance of hooking a fish. And of course, Pat says, change your bait regularly and start out by choosing a really good hot bait. Over on the Native Sun, I want you to walk on board and defer to the crew, but they have been saying a three-way swivel with about a four to six ounce torpedo sinker, 25 pound fluorocarbon, and a number four or six treble hook seems to be working best of all. But in either case, you walk on the Aloha Spirit or any other boat, you definitely want to make sure that you are asking the crew what's been working because they were out there the day before. They have your best interest at heart. They want you to catch fish and they're going to turn you on to everything you need to know about how to catch more and more fish. Some local guys, private boaters, have also been coming up with some extraordinary catches. And when it's father and son, it simply can't be beat. I mean, that's the whole purpose of sport fishing and the great outdoors. It's to bring families together. I know it works in my family. I've said it many times before. If I call my son Philip or Patrick and I say, come on over guys, and we're going to sit on the couch today and we're going to talk for like six hours. What do you think? And they're like, uh, you start drinking again? Uh, that doesn't sound like fun to me. But if I say, hey boys, you want to surf fish down here today? Man, we'll We'll, we'll, we'll slam. We'll have a great time. We'll get a big flatty out of the surf. Philip and I are planning on doing that tomorrow morning. They're in. And guess what? You get to talk and have fun. Anyway, a long way to get to Edward Tommy Yoso and his dad. Check out those beautiful halibut. Couple nice fish. They had an additional three fish to go along with it. They are slaying the halibut. Father and son, nice going, Edward. You've got to love that, man. That is really fun stuff. Now, locally also, if you're not fishing halibut, there's plenty of sculpin and whitefish around right now. And of course, they provide excellent table fare. They're so great to eat. Making fish tacos out of those is such a great way, and I highly recommend. In fact, maybe I'll give you my fish taco recipe here one of these days, but the Ensenada battered fish with that white sauce and all the fixings of cilantro and the onions and the fresh salsa. Oh my God, I'm getting hungry here. Man, it is so good. And sculpin and whitefish make for the perfect way of doing that. Hey, by the way, happy birthday, Roy Rose from the Royal Polaris. Man, everybody raves about Roy and what a great job he does. I know Eddie Leland, who passed away um, last year. Uh, Eddie used to tell me, I could like not see Roy Rose for a year or so and he always remembered my name and not only that he could remember a fish that I caught 10 years ago 12 years ago 15 years ago on board the RP and many of you know Roy will know that is true anyway he celebrated his birthday by going out on a half day trip with some friends and having some fun catching some bottom grabbers of course they can go into Mexican waters if they fish rockfish and scope and whitefish are okay and they caught some bath so good stuff down there out of San Diego the um uh, the Mission Bell, excuse me, I almost forgot. My friend, John Hardigan runs that boat. What's wrong with me? And Scott Bilkert is the galley cook. Man, what a combo that is. But anyway, they were out and picking at some whitefish. They said it was easy limits on the whitefish if you wanted to get it. Their group said about half limits. Hey, we're good. We got enough. Let's go bass fishing. They picked off some sand bass. Premier down there has been doing much of the same. There's some pretty darn good wintertime sand bass fishing going on. And of course, you've got all that other stuff along with it. Gary Boland was on the Ara and out of Long Beach Sport Fishing. And man, he said, these sand dabs are not only good to eat, they're super expensive if you go to a restaurant and order a couple of these things. So Gary went out and loaded up on the Ara and out of Long Beach sport fishing. If you're into the sand dabs, man, you can go out there and get a bucket full of those things and dine for a while on those delicious eating dabs. So that looks like fun also. Uh, also, we have to talk about the surf and we continue to see some excellent bar perch fishing up and down the coast here in Southern California. And also 
man, those birds are going nuts, aren't they? And also across the border in Baja, California, really great fishing going on down there for barred perch. We see it all the way down from San Quentin all the way up to Ventura and beyond that for barred perch. There's also occasional holdover corvina around. That's when biting and also still some nice flatties coming out of the surf. You got to love Jan Merchant with a nice halibut in the surf. I don't know how you can beat that. Nice hit for her. Lucky crab lures were great in the surf, but also you can catch them on a small chrome jig like a Castmaster or a Crocodile. By the way, highly recommend you go by Bill Varney's booth at the Bart Hall Show at the Del Mar Fairgrounds. Bill is an expert surf fisherman, and he will set you right. Don't also forget to go by the Island Fishing Tackle booth at the Del Mar Fairgrounds and say hi to Sam and to Steve and to everybody over there, Eric, and uh, my friends over at Blacktail Hooks. That's right, Sky and Izzy. I got to spend some precious moments with them yesterday. Sky, Izzy, good morning to you. Hope you're doing well. Buy two packs of Blacktail Hooks and get a third one for free over there. And they're their new ringed hooks in sizes that nobody else is making. Smaller hooks, ringed hooks. Man, they work fantastic. You should check those out. In fact, you say hi to me today at the Del Mar Fairgrounds. I might have one little pack for you. I'm going to run out fast, so make sure you say hi. You're going to have to answer a question. I'll try to make it an easy question so you can get a pack. But black tail hooks, you have got to love it. Really good stuff. Back to the surf. We continue to see also not only that, but a few yellowfin croaker. And remember, your surf fishing headquarters is right down on the corner of Seal Beach Boulevard and Pacific Coast Highway. Yeah, it is big fish, bait and tackle. And while they are your surf fishing headquarters, they also have everything you'll need from trout to big bluefin tuna and everything in between. More importantly, they've got all the bait you'll need to be successful here in the Southern California surf. Big fish, bait and tackle. Drop by and say hi to them. And remember, they are starting on March the 1st to have a monthly derby. Surf Fishing Derby, every month they'll focus on a different species. Starting March 1st, it'll be Barred Perch. And we'll have more details on that. You can win a brand new, beautiful custom surf fishing rod. Big fish bait and tackle. Drop by and get the details from them, or I'll be filling you in as we go along. As you look out there, by the way, speaking of surf fishing, all of the sand and these birds are feeding on some of the stuff that gets dredged up. But think about it. What else do you think? is here right now. Of course, yes. I mean, there's like a giant chum bucket going on here. So not only are the birds feeding on it, but out there, even though it's very sandy and off color, you gotta know this is just sucking in all kinds of predators. And we have seen the few times that I've been able to surf fish. Unfortunately, today will not be one of those times. I'm heading to the Del Mar show in a second, but tomorrow will be with my son, Philip. I hope. But the few times we've been here, we've caught such a variety of fish. Big, giant, jack smelt, halibut, leopard sharks, all kinds of different perch, and several other types of fish. It really has been really good. So don't let this scare you away. In fact, I think this is a plus for sure. Howard Hatta is in the Amazon. What's he doing? Catching gators down there? Howard, be careful with that thing, man. I know you uh, want a new pair of shoes, but you're getting out of control in the Amazon. Another beautiful trip down to the Amazon. Maybe we'll get Howard on our show and talk to him about that. Donnie Brockman, another great guy who's been in this business for a long, long time. He's up there at Havasu fishing for stripers. Donnie uh, says, I never get tired of catching these things. And as you can see, they've had some great striper fishing going on there. The lobster hoop netting update. Got to get to that because it's been really, really good and it continues that way. Again, last night was a great night for Boats to Fish Catalina Island. They had great fishing as well as the guys that are hoop netting here locally. We saw some really excellent hoop netting going on. Um, Hung Pham with a 5.6 pound, beautiful, gorgeous lobster. And that was one of many. He had limits. So really, really good stuff. Limits. Seven lobster per rod. Once again, 50 bucks a pound at least for those things. You get a limit, you got 10 pounds at least, sometimes more than that. Well, just take that one lobster that he caught there. Five pounds, 250 bucks for that thing. Seems ridiculous, but 
You know, what can I tell you? That's what these things cost nowadays. How about David King fishing Lake Irvine, catching his first bass of 2024. David, nice going. We are really happy for you. Nice hit indeed. All right, my friends, as we continue to monitor all the great fishing going on in the dead of winter, can you imagine what the morning briefing is going to be like when we start catching all those yellows and bluefin tuna and so much more? It's going to be a truly exciting year. You know, all the halibut that are being caught, Native Sun and the Aloha Spirit, and those private boaters and the surf, we forecast that. It was easy to do because remember, we had so much market squid here this year and last year inhabiting our coastal regions and out there on the banks and the islands. It was phenomenal, the amount of market squid. And that is all a giant magnet that just brings predators in. And that started earlier last year. And all that fish is starting to push in here. I'm telling you, it's going to be an extraordinary year. And might as well just say it right now, look out for one heck of a white sea bass here. That also is going to be really good. And that blue fan tuna feeds on squid also. That should be good. Hey, heating and air conditioning needs. You got to go to John Lopez. There's nobody better than John. A great guy who will treat you like you deserve to be treated. He will do a great job for you. He's a great family man. And I highly recommend you give John Lopez a call. Efficient heating and air conditioning. Hey, up there in Ventura Harbor Sport Fishing, the Island Spirit is getting ready for the 2024 season. It's going to be a great one up there. They are setting up charters and getting ready for lots more. Island Spirit, Ventura Harbor Sport Fishing, of course, the endeavors up there, Tucker McCombs. Nobody does a better job than Tucker. Such a great fisherman who does a great job. 805-676-3474. Has there been anything weird going on behind me? You guys have been watching this. Just birds dining on their early morning morsels here this morning. Pretty cool. All right. Hey, have a great day. It's always good to spend time with you. I hope I see you in a couple of hours at the Del Mar Show. Make sure you come up and say hi. And the elf will be there. Greg Bates, he'll be there with me, uh, helping me to distribute a few little prizes that we have for you. All you have to do is walk up and say, I love Freeman Adventures, or I hate Freeman Adventures, or you stink, or something like that. Then we'll ask you a question, and we'll see whether or not you can answer the question correctly and get a free prize. Limited amount, so I hope I don't run out too early. Have a great day, and as always, I hope to see you really, really soon.